Now the acetyl that we have formed now, that is acyclic, open chain. That could be cyclic as well. Suppose I take this aldehyde and I take ethylene glycol. This is ethylene glycol. IUPAC name will be ethane 1,2-diol. This is ethylene glycol. Now if, if I take these two in presence of dry HCl, then because they are two OH group on, on the, in the same compound, the last time what we did, we added one alcohol, then we added the next alcohol. But they are two alcoholic groups in the same compound. So from one end, the first alcoholic group will get added. And for the next step, from the same compound, the next alcoholic group will be added. So what we will get is this oxygen This is the hemiacetyl that we formed. We had one alcohol added, one OH group and two R groups. If you have taken an aldehyde here, it will be hydrogen. This is the hemiacetyl. In the next step, what we used to do, we added next alcohol and we removed off this water because the next alcoholic group is in the same compound. So what will happen is both the ends of the, both the ends will get attached to the same carbon and we have a cyclic ring like this. So if you take ethylene glycol, we'll have a cyclic acetyl or cyclic ketyl, right? Now cyclization brings about stability into the molecule. If you have studied organic, uh, if you have studied coordination chemistry and there you must have studied the cyclic ligands are, uh, form, are, are can replace acyclic ligands because chelation or cycliz cyclization when that occurs, then that become, brings about stability into the compound. So if the product is becoming cyclic, it is always more favorable. So in this case, uh, because it's a cyclic acetyl, a uh, cyclic ketyl, then this is more favorable and the stability of this cyclic acetyl will be more than a cyclic one. So the unstability of acetyl that we were talking about a minute back, that will be less in this case because this is a cyclic acetyl. So ethylene glycol is a is 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 very commonly used to make cyclic acetyl or cyclic ketyl. That's all about addition on alcohol of alcohol on carbonyl compound. Now let's very quickly look at the application of this reaction. Now suppose this is the compound that I have and I have taken a Grignard reagent where R part is methyl. Now I want this as my final product. Now how would I get it? The one thing is just do the reaction and you may get it. But if you think, then you will be able to think that this is not what you are going to get if you just carry out the reaction directly. Because if you have one equivalent, one equivalent means per molecule of substrate or per mole of substrate, you have one mole of reagent. So for one molecule of the substrate, you have one molecule or the one equivalent of the reagent. Now, if there are two reactive sites, only one will undergo reaction because there is only one equivalent of reagent. Now, there are two reactive sites. As you can see, one is ketonic, one is aldehydic. There are two carbonyl groups. So, this methyl can go and attack on any one of them depending upon their reactivity. Now, aldehyde, as we have talked in the last lecture, just before beginning the reaction, that aldehydes are more reactive because the stabilization, electron stabilization is less. In ketonic group, if you see, there are R groups on both the sides. And uh, the hindrance is also greater. So that makes aldehyde group more reactive. Now, if aldehyde group is more reactive, this methyl is not going to attack this ketone as it has been shown here. It will go and attack this aldehyde. So, but in the product, it has been shown that methyl has attacked ketone. 
So the question is how can you carry out this particular conversion? And here comes the application of acetyl formation. What we do is suppose if I have taken ethylene glycol and before beginning with the reaction of Grignard reagent if I carry out the reaction of cyclic acetyl if I make cyclic acetyl or cyclic ketyl I carry out the reaction with ethylene glycol I take dry HCl along with this so now the reactive site is aldehyde so the reaction of this ethylene glycol again I take one equivalent will be first at aldehyde because aldehyde is more reactive and the cyclization the cyclic acetyl formation will occur at the aldehyde group like this so now you have first made a cyclic acetyl now you carry on the reaction with Grignard reagent now this oxygen has lone pair now this is an electron rich site any electron rich species will not approach the cyclic ring because of repulsion by four electron pairs present in the cyclic ring so this CS3 is going to do nothing because this CS3 has negative charge the CS3 minus is not going to approach anywhere near the cyclic ring now this carbon has positive charge partial positive charge so this methyl group is now going to come and attack this C double bond o present in ketone so if that occurs we have this non subsequent hydrolysis first this will become neutral and then as we have seen as we have talked before that when hydration when system is acidic when we carry out hydration of cyclic acetyl or ketyl the reaction goes backward and you get the carbonyl group as you had before because this is a reversible reaction right so this carbonyl will be regenerated and this will become neutral so now you have the desired product what you wanted to have so this this reaction is used to protect aldehyde and to give preference at the of to give preference to ketonic site for reaction over aldehydic because under normal circumstance aldehyde will go through to reaction before ketone because aldehydes are more reactive so once you protect the aldehyde like this now the ketone can go for the reaction so in that way you 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 if you want you can make the ketonic group to react before the aldehydic group so this is an important uh, application of this reaction